feel very empowered. Um, but yes, I, also. Also know, <laughs> I also know that there is an online course. Tell us a bit, little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, so the online course, I mean, the book has 12 modules or 12 chapters, rather. Yes. And the online course is an extension of the book. So it's 12 modules. And every single module has, instead of you having to read the, mod, the like the theory behind it, yeah. it's me with my standard old flip chart, <laughs> old school, um, explaining the model to you in a very quick seven to eight minute video. And then after that, we actually give you further resources. We act, like we give you a whole agenda to say, now go and run this specific chapter or module with your team. So we physically give you the agenda to become your own team facilitator. Um, and then we add a few extra articles, TED Talks, a worksheet, reflection questions, the actual slides that you can use. If you don't want to use a flip chart, you can, you can just use the slides and add your own logo into it even. So, uh, for the more but, modern of us, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's the book just on an online version with a whole lot of more resources. Yeah. And then, if a company felt they needed more, then they would come to you at Credo Growth and get facilitators as 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 part of the process. So, for example, we've got quite a few clients who's bought the book, and believe it or not, they have book clubs <laughs> within the business. Yes, it's amazing. But with wine, and, sorry, eh? with wine, I hope so. <laughs> that <would be> great. <laughs> um, so that's what book club is about, isn't it? <laughs> so, um, but what they have also done, and we've we've got like our retainer clients very often do this, is that they now asked us to take the whole business through the ditch mediocrity process, because there is something that happens when there's an external facilitator coming in who doesn't have hidden agendas in terms of trying to put a message in here and trying to land a little bit of a, you know, a, a, a poke here that means where someone needs to get a, a message underhandedly. Yes. So it's literally taking the whole business, whether it's leadership level or cross-functional teams through this process. And we do short little interventions on a monthly basis. They have to go and implement it. We're creating peer co coaching circles. So it's amazing. It's the book, it's the online course, and then, there's the workshops. Of course, there's loads of other workshops that we do in terms of if teams are mm. in conf conflict or there's personality dynamics at play. But mm. just from a digital property process, it's those kind of three areas where, where we work together with the clients. That works really well. So I have to ask, I love I love the the name Ditch Mediocrity. Where did it come from? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So that wasn't the original name. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to swear online, okay. but the original name was another word and then mediocrity. <laughs> um, four letters. Yes, four letters and um, similar line of subtle art of not giving her. <laughs> and then a very dear friend and mentor of mine, um, you know him, Richard, Mul Richard Mulholland, he... He had a. He challenged me on the name, and and it, in in many various ways. And I think what landed the the most for me was the fact that his daughter had to read that name, you know, mediocrity. Yes. Mm. And she was, I think, I think she's thirteen years old. And I was like, is that mm -hmm. what I want to portray? Is where kids can't really look at this book, and from what the recent work that we've done. It's this is exactly what high school kids also need, and they need they need that for their professional life. So immediately I was like, okay, I hear you loud and clearly. Um, and then it went back to the drawing board. I didn't want to lose the word mediocrity. Mm -hmm. um, um, like that was very important to me. And uh, with many various uh, people, I asked. We had ditching. We had trumping. We had. Uh, I can't even remember all the words. Yeah. Um, and then the, just the ditch mediocrity came from a friend of mine. And when I saw him, I'm like, yeah, that's me. That's a ditch. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah. But now, Helene, I have to I have to ask you, so many people, I work in a similar field as you do, so many people just say, my people are just lazy. They want to be mediocre. They don't care. It's like, why bother? Yeah, that's a that's an interesting one. Hey, I, like whoever says that, I would like to unpack that with them, because 
there's a few there's a few things here one is they might just be lazy like let's just like face it they might some people like i show up for work it's all i want to do i don't want to engage more i do my job and i move away that doesn't necessarily mean they're lazy in their eyes they are i'm here to do what i'm paid to do and i move and they're happy with that I would like to challenge people in that sense to ask also, how engaged are they? Um, what are you doing as an employer in order to create a space where they want to grow? So what are you doing to develop that growth mindset? Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, I also want to look at the employee. I did write an article the other day around toughen up cupcake, which, <laughs> yeah, interesting. But it's about... Don't just wait for the employer or the founder or the entrepreneur of the business to do something, but also show up as an employee and show up and say that, it, that you've got ambitions and not just wait for it. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes also just say thank you for everything that's being done. Um, so that's, that's, the, that's the second thing. So it might just be that they are, or that's just kind of mm -hmm. what works for them at the moment because they're so overstimulated at, at home. They, they just need some consistency. Mm -hmm. Or it is the engagement factor, like what engagement um, mm -hmm. like environment are you creating? And then there's another thing that pops up for me. I love the book Extreme Ownership. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely love it. And one of the principles in Extreme Ownership is there are no bad ones, only bad leaders. And that's a yes. tough one to swallow. So mm -hmm. my, my third challenge is like, is it the team or is it you? And again, I went through a very, like, um, humbling is the wrong word, but a very real experience just last week in terms of me and and someone within the team that fe that felt that it wasn't safe. And I was also, I was in a space where everything just had to happen in a hurry and like almost mm -hmm. create a non-psychological safe space, which is what I'm speaking about in the book. Um, and then it's kind of like, is it, is it, is it the team member or is it me? And it's mm. that bit swallow. Like if this is how she feels, whether it's whether mm. it's validated or not, I created that environment. Yes, she's got her own things that she needs to show up for, but I also, as a leader, need to take ownership of that. And that's hard. Mm. That's hard. But that is where growth happens, and that where, that's where you. I think um, uh, Brené Brown says, "Lean in, don't tap out." That's mm. the hard. Mm. Yeah. I'm with you there. I'm with you there. And especially given that it's not really considered very fashionable to be vulnerable. It is very difficult to put up your hand and then say, oh, oops, I did this wrong. Yeah. Um, and then it's easier to just sort of fall yeah. people off. It's and, and on the topic of vulnerability, I had a team meeting this morning where, where they said to me, we don't know when you're going through a, through a bad time personally because you don't tell us. Mm. And and it's we had we we did a recontracting this morning around how are we going to be together as a team? And one of the things like, Eileen, we we want to know what's going on with you, but you don't tell us. I was like, okay, well, let's make the agreement that ask, because mm -hmm. I'm not going to just share. Ask me also how I am instead of me just asking you. And yes. it's just again this morning I was reminded of how freaking powerful that psychological contract is for creating mm -hmm. safety. Um, yeah, so it's yeah. The, the past two weeks, from a leadership perspective, has been very challenging. I've, I've got a book if you want to. Read, I've got a book if you want to read it. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, it'll give you some good tips. <laughs> yeah, no, see, I see. I do need to read my own book, so it's right here. <laughs> yeah. um, I wrote. Uh, I actually recorded for Performance Cafe for the perspectives for the solo. Uh, I think it was a week or so ago. Yeah. We, we posted knowing is not the same as doing. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> I know your pain. I feel it. <laughs> I've got this. Um, my keynote reel is, I, 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 it's so cheesy. But anyway, I, I, I opened it like, knowledge is power, right? No, action is. And it's that, like, it's that thing. Yes. I can know all of the stuff. I've been working with this stuff for more than 15 years. And if I don't implement, like practice what we preach, it bites me every time mm -hmm. and my, reminds me of it. And, and again, like I say, the past two weeks was a beautiful example of me not having been so focused on what it is that we do. Do it with clients, but you need to look in-house as well, 100%. 
It is, and and but what you're saying is so con consistent is that you keep coming back to this growth mindset. It happened, that's okay. Now I reset, I learn, and I keep going. And I think that's the thing that people sort of shy away from. It's a bit like, oh, I'm on diet. I've had a ton of cake. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to ditch the diet instead of saying, well, no, tomorrow I'm just going to start yeah. without the cake again. Yeah, exactly. We we were we had a learning day yesterday for the accelerator program, <laughs> and the trainer opened. Today is not a spa; it's a gym. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Leadership is like it's not a spa. It's every day is a gym, and sometimes you your your weights feel light, and other times you physically can't even pick it up. Mm. And I, it doesn't help to not. It doesn't help to to go through it and go. I don't make mistakes as a leader. I make yes. many mistakes. And mm. again, this conversation was one about the last two weeks and last month or so. And you just have you have to swallow it up and. Learn from it, and together with they, with and the amazing thing is, they also said how what we could have done differently in order to change mm -hmm. this. So everyone took ownership. That for me is high performance. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Everyone realizing, shit, man, we all of us had a part to play in this. Mm. Mm. Definitely. So. I think it's in the introduction of your book, you speak about you are assuming that visions, values, and KPIs are already established in the business for the person yeah. who's reading your book. Yeah. Talk to me about that because so many people say, well, you know, I'm, an, I'm a solopreneur. There's only five people in my office. We don't need a vision. We don't need KPIs. We know what we're doing. Tell me a bit yeah, about challenge. <laughs> Sorry. No, I'm saying challenge. <laughs> so, um, so first of all, the reason why I didn't go into that is because there are so many books that already speak about values, KPIs, purpose. I mean, Simon Sinek, Vern Harnish, Scaling Up. I Like, there was no reason for me to replicate all of that. Um, mm. And it would have made the book not a quick, uh, a quick thing to read, right? So it would have been a textbook, which I didn't want. But um, I think especially in COVID, what has kept us very busy is supporting clients to identify, redefine, define, or kind of identify their values. And now that the values are there, what do we do with those values? How do you practically bring that alive within the business? And like, it's not just, oh, th these are our five values. It's on a document. Great, fantastic. Now we have it and we can put it on the website. And like, what does the behaviors look like with those values? What questions are you going to create to understand whether someone is showing up in that behavior? Mm -hmm. So that's on the value side. Then the KPI side, again, like I, I speak about chapter one around the forming, storming, norming, and performing. Mm -hmm. And if people don't know what is expected of them, then the storming comes so much sooner and lasts for so much longer. And the uncertainty, it lingers. If you don't know what it is that you need to achieve, what are, your, what, what are you responsible for? What are you accountable for? If you think about the RACI chart, we just did the RACI. Well, we, yes. my amazing 2IC just did the RACI. Um, so all of those things are fundamentally important in order to move through storming, through norming, all the way to performing. Otherwise, you're mm. going to say something in your, in your beginning stages where who swims in what lane? Yes. And I like there's a, um, a phenomenal lady called Lacey Waterkane, and she's also part of Entrepreneurs Organization. And I remember her once saying, swim in your lane, own your lane, stay in your lane. <laughs> no? Of course, swim over to someone, others, when, to someone else's lane when they are drowning, 100%. Yes. But if you don't know what your lane is, how are you supposed to do to, to know what you do to what to know what to do? How are mm. you supposed to perform? Never mind speaking about a high performance. Yeah. I, I always find that so interesting. I always say, would you get onto an airplane and not knowing where it's going or how long it's going to take to get there? Then why do we expect that from employees? Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> I, I want to get on there because the stimulus in me is going, hell yeah, where are we going? <laughs> Okay, then they people like you. <laughs> but if you're if you're a structured person, hmm. like how is that going to help you? How is that going to motivate you? How is that even going to get you to want to come to work? Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, absolutely. But, but, but the, the thing is, if you, if I if I remember correctly, if you if you put a stimulus person on that plane, they might be excited by the challenge, but they're going to be all over the show and upset people because they're going to be out all over all the lanes, you know, having. Stuff. And they probably were going to want to interfere of where the plane's going. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll tell you. Don't worry. Just get us on there. We'll take it somewhere. (laughs) Perfect. So, um, the last question I wanted to ask you, we've we've had such a positive, we've had such fun talking about your books. And obviously, because of my psychology background, it really spoke to me. So, it was was lovely for me to see this in action. But I wanted to ask you, who is the audience for the book? And is there a different audience for the book, for the online learning and for working with Credo? Yeah, that's that's actually a very good point in terms of the different audience. Um, So I think from a book perspective, initially, ideally, I wrote the book for anyone who's leading someone. And whether it's one person, two people, or up to 50 people, whatever the case might be, if you are leading someone else, then 100% this book is for you. Mm. However, what's kind of an a, a added bonus is that you don't necessarily have to be leading someone in order to get value from this. So there's a there's an element of leading others and I get value as well as self-leadership. Mm. Because a lot of these tools really is about how am I being as a person, how am I being as a leader, and how does that affect the way of how I behave and communicate with someone else? And you can implement that in your marriage, with your children, uh, with your friends, with your peers. So you don't necessarily have to be a leader. But my initial intent was, of course, to write it for someone who's leading people. And then, and then the, the online course, again, it's, it's a very similar approach. However, because of the added resources and the guided agenda that we've written, there I would say it's definitely for mm-hmm. if you want to become your own team facilitator. Mm-hmm. So it's um, whether, again, you can do it with two people in your team. You don't need a team of 10 and more. If it's two people, I mean, we do it in our business as well, and we in less than 10. So it's in that sense, you can really take that agenda and every single monthly meeting that you have, you can run through that agenda. So that that's kind of the um, the, the main target of, of who I wrote this book for. But I, I do think it's more the outcome that I want, and that's people to get a practical way of looking at things that they can actually Mm. that that's the main thing wonderful and i think also um i think very often when we when we think of leadership we think of someone who has a title or some badge but i mean many 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 uh businesses are now agile so the person who's leading a project today is not someone who's leading a project tomorrow yeah. And so just even that, the book gives you the tools so that on the other occasion that you have to lead. Yeah. it's And remember, there's the whole thing around leading without a title, right? Mm. You might not have people reporting into you, but you might be the influencer in your team. Mm. And people might look up to you. You might be that one person that, people's come, that people come to to ask advice for or to share stories with because you listen really well. Mm. And of these things can assist you with that because it's about behavioral psychology it's mm-hmm. not just the the systems implementation part of teams um yes. or you know it, it, it's it's way it's way more deeper than that it's it, it's not on that operational side and therefore you can implement it just by you engaging with other human beings <laughs> Mm. And I think when it comes to just learning from the book, what I found really useful was the case studies, because they sort of bring what's in there to life based on what you've seen with clients or sets of clients. That was actually one of my favorite parts, is after every single chapter thinking, now I'm thinking back of 15 years and up until very recently, it's like, Hmm, which client am I going to use for that? I'm like, that story. Oh, no, that story. I'm like, damn it, I need to choose a story. <laughs> so th- that was quite a very, that was a very cool trip down memory lane with, with all the different client engagements that I've had. And it was so nice to remember the, the impact um, mm-hmm. that I've had in these things. And like, yes. it, 
I, I again I received a, a message from a very very important and dear client of mine who is now in the US um, and just saying your impact has or you, the journey with you has been why part of why I'm where I am damn that feels good <laughs> <laughs> there's acknowledgement for you <laughs> yeah exactly but but that's why we do what we do it's because mm. of impact and the fact that it's actual making getting people to change behavior um and and increase awareness i guess but yeah that was quite a fun approach um in terms of which so you have to take case studies for ditch mediocrity too yeah exactly i'm, I'm busy i'm busy collecting <laughs> <laughs> yeah it might have to be an internal ditch mediocrity after the past two weeks like lessons <laughs> learned <laughs> i'm with you <laughs> But Helene, thanks so much. I, I really appreciate it. And uh, um, looking forward to having you back, whether it's for Ditch Mediocrity 2 or 3 or just for a catch up again in a while when the world turns right side up. Hopefully COVID is going to start uh, becoming a bit more manageable again for us. But thank yeah. you for your time. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. And thanks for having me. It's always great chatting to you. <laughs> thanks so much. Well, everyone, I, I sometimes feel like I say this after each episode, but aren't we just spoiled for the valuable learnings that we get with each of these uh, uh, discussions that we have with our coffee companions? Um, I, what I really love about Helene's book is that it's quick to take action and move on. I just thought that, you know, if you are battling through COVID and you feel like, well, I don't have money to spend on thousands of things to Sort of support me then this book is definitely way to go and as you heard from helene herself it was a 15 year year uh, travel that or 50 year 15 year journey that got her to where she is now so certainly more than enough expertise to take from but thank you so much for joining us again uh, this week i look forward to seeing you for our next coffee companion and as always remember if you've liked this and you're joining us from youtube on the page Oh, I always get it wrong on the page. I think around this side, there is the uh, subscribe and then click on the notification bell so you know when our next video is coming out. If you're joining us from, linked, uh, from LinkedIn or from Facebook, lovely to have you. Please like, subscribe and share so we can get all of this good advice out to the people that need it. But I will see you again next week at the Performance Girl Fair.